Alrighty, welcome back to the right tarantulas. My name is AJ. Seat's still pretty squeaky. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing today, um, if you watch my video that I posted yesterday, um, we made some of these cages here. And uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna be rehoming these tarantulas into these new cages that I made yesterday. I'm just gonna take you through the process of what I do and how I do it, and, and we'll get uh, we'll get started here. So I think uh, we'll start with probably the my Avic Avic, uh, my pink toe, um, just because that's the first one on the list here. And that's the one that's right up. So take the lid off here. Now what we're gonna do is. I'm probably going to fill it up to about, mm, about here um, with substrate just to kind of give enough substrate to um, hold up any kind of cork bark that I put in there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Alrighty. So I got that filled up as you see. It's about right there. Um, so like I was saying, I do have a few holes that are pretty low. Uh, a little bit of dirt might come out of there a little bit, but that's fine. Um, so what I use is like a substrate normally is uh, I'll get a jungle mix. I'll use a uh, very fine non-calcinated sand. Um, and then I'll also get a bag of um, sphagnum moss and <clears throat> topsoil with uh, make sure it's organic make sure it doesn't have any kind of uh, um, try to get some without fertilizer uh, it's not necessarily going to hurt your tarantulas by any means but if they do uh, some fertilizers um, depending on the brand that you get can be um, <clears throat> a little bit stronger than others so um, if you can get some without fertilizer, if you can't, that's fine. Uh, but I just kind of mix all those together. Uh, and what that does is it kind of, uh, the sand kind of helps give a little bit of, um, a little bit of rigidity. Uh, it kind of gives them something solid that they can web to. Um, so with the graininess inside the dirt, it kind of, it's easier for them to actually create, um, webbing and then some can create burrows and stuff like that. So uh, now next what we're gonna do is we need some cork bark for this. Um, it is kind of like an oblong square-ish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find something here. Um, particularly you would want something that's gonna be the length of the cage. So like this, uh, this piece here. This probably will be pretty good. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull out some stuff here. And then I'm just gonna lean it up against the side here. And then I'm gonna go around and pack the dirt around it to kind of help give it some more support. And what that does is it kind of gives it a little, makes it a little bit sturdier. So now I like to, uh, I like to use cork bark on arboreals like this, just in case uh, if, when I breed them, um, I can tell whether or not there's an egg sac in there. I do know that they get kind of antsy around it, but uh, we keep the room pretty dark when nobody's in here. So uh, so it shouldn't freak the freak, freak her out too much. So, um, yeah, we'll get some more decorations here going. Um, got some little figurines here. Uh, everything here you see is from the dollar store. So, I mean, everything here is fairly cheap. Now, gonna just keep everything in here together. So, let's see about a particular. We'll go with this one. How about that? Go with some monsters in here. I'll just kind of put that back there on the other side of the cork bark. 
Uh, if they don't like it, they'll probably move it, but I don't particularly see her moving it any, uh, at all <laughs> at any point. So, um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit, I have some of these gemstones here. Uh, got def just got these at the dollar store. I'm just going to put them in here, give a little bit of life to this cage here. I'm just going to put them in the corner there. Um, no big deal. Now, we'll look and see if I get in some plants. I use Dollar Store Fake Plants. It's the cheapest and it, it's the most useful if you, if you break them off. Um, like, if we get this piece here, you can just kind of like pull the little petals off. You don't necessarily have to use the branches or anything like that. But what this can do is give a little bit more color to the cage. Um, make it a little bit, make it pop a little more. Plus, it makes me feel better. So, um, now what we'll do is we'll kind of set this back here a little bit. Um, now what we got to do is we got to get this one into this here catch cup and get them transferred over. And that'll be the Arboreo. So let's get started here. So what I'm going to do, make sure you got, I got a paintbrush here. Um, got a couple of them. And I've also got this little straw. Now, most people wouldn't ever recommend you blowing on your tarantulas. Um, it is a type of coaxing method, but you have to know how much air to put through the straw so that you don't freak them out and make them bolt. Um, so I, don't, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody that hasn't really practiced with it at all. Because um, you can definitely put way too much air through here and seriously, seriously stress out your tarantula. So I probably won't use this today. Uh, paintbrush is usually um, perfectly fine and it's going to work just fine for what we're doing. Uh, none of these tarantulas are particularly bolty. Um, the um, pink toe here is generally kind of jolty a little bit, but not too much. Uh, this one's been pretty chill lately, so. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this over the cage here. Just like that. And then we are just going to poke until she decides she wants to come up. Come on. Come on. There you go. There you go, girl. Just like that. She's moving nice and slow, but as, as you can see, she's she gets kind of jolty a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. It's normal. Now what we'll do is I'm just kind of, if you can see this, I'm just going to kind of caress her around the cork bark. Once she feels it, she'll kind of, she'll get onto it and she'll start crawling on it. So let's see. There we go. See, just nice and gentle. Uh, with Avix, they're pretty notorious for the little jolts you see there. And there it is. That one is rehomed. Put the lid on that. This one. This cage will go. I'm going to put a, my label on here. I try to keep everything labeled so. If I get too many tarantulas, I uh, I can remember who's who. Sometimes they can look pretty similar. So, but yeah, there's uh, there's the Avic. I'm gonna put that one off to the side. So now, there are, all of the cages will probably get these yellow petals that I have here, um, just because we'll just go through one plant at a time. So this one, uh, it's a little bit smaller. It's not necessarily a Fostorial, like I said in my last video. Um, this one is a Chaco Golden E, but this one will be fine. There's plenty of ventilation for the Chaco. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do is 
we'll get some dirt into this one. I'm probably going to fill it up to maybe about here um, and then put some cork bark and some other stuff in there as well. So, got some nice dirt in there. Kind of spread it out a little bit. Alrighty, so now we're going to do cork bark. Let's we'll see about trying to get a hide in for this one. Alrighty, so I think this one piece right here, it's a little thick, but uh, that should be alright. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out around here kind of smooth it around and you know what i'm even going to do i'm going to take this little slate rock here and i'm just going to put it under one side and sprinkle some dirt o over it so what that does is it kind of they can go up under there create their own little burrow and then this is supported so if they dig a little bit too deep it doesn't it, it, it won't fall down on them uh, so one thing I will say that I did forget on the a on the AVIC cage um, is a water dish <laughs> um, for uh, tarantula that particularly needs water, like the AVIC. Uh, huge brain fart, um, but easy fix. So what I do um, with that is I have Pangea. I just get gecko feeding cups so little plastic cups you can get about a hundred of them for about ten dollars um they're perfect water dishes uh they're not too deep um they hold plenty of water um and then just kind of poke that down in there and then this is where these bottles come in handy um if you watched my last video or if you're new, uh, I use this to kind of just dampen the substrate, fill up water dishes uh, after I make a cage or a little bit before. Um, but yeah, so there's <laughs> we got a we got a water dish in there, uh, dampened up the substrate a little bit, but it should be fine for a little bit. She did get misted yesterday, so. Alrighty, back to this cage. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some decorations. Now, we'll just go ahead and put the plants, the leaves, and stuff. I'll go ahead and pop a couple off here. Now, with these, I think I'm going to go back here with them. Uh, my Choco, um, or Choco Taco, as we call her here in the house. Um, she does like to move her, uh, her flowers around that are already in there. Um, so, I expect these to be moved. So, wherever I put them, she's not going to like them, of course, because... Of course, whatever I whatever I do for her, she she wants to change it. So um, now what we'll do is it's not quite time for for packaging her up yet and putting her in there. But what we will do is we'll get some. Uh, oh, there they are. Oh, we'll get, get a little something here for decorations. Now, I'm not going to go too big just because this is a pretty small, it's a smaller enclosure. So we got a couple little little dinosaurs here that are real small that you can put out, put out here in the middle. You know, uh, kind of just a little extra fun. Um, but then, uh, it'll probably be it for this cage. They don't need a terrible lot of, you know, super fun things, but... Uh, this one, this is not going to be a permanent home. This Chaco is still pretty young. Uh, it's not quite a juvenile yet. Um, and Chaco Gold needs to get pretty good size. So uh, now we'll get a water dish. So let me get another one of my, one of my cups here. Uh, so one thing I do, I never reuse a cup, even if it's going into the same cage as the tarantula that's going in there with it. I uh, do that just because of the price. It's not worth uh, any possible transfer of bacteria for me. I'm just I'm paranoid. You could definitely reuse the reuse the water dish that 
that was in the cage with your tarantula before if it, they're going into this home. Uh, but I don't, because uh, I guess I'm a little different than most people. But um, they're, they're a dime a dozen, so it's not a big deal. Now, I do need to get a different catch cup just because this one is a little bit smaller. Um, so I have some other cages here. Um, it's a two-piece arboreal cage, kind of like this one, just a smaller version. Um, I'm just going to use the bottom side of it. It's just a clear plastic. Uh, works really well for cupping um, cupping smaller tarantulas like this one. Uh, she also might just make it really easy for me. And I think I might be able to just take her in her water dish just like this and let her crawl out on her own. Yep, look at that. Man, don't you just love it when it gets easy? <laughs> um, I might even just... Uh, might throw a few of these flowers in here just to make her feel a little bit more at home, you know, around her water dish, kind of like it was in the other cage, you know, just like that. And there you go. Choco Taco, the Choco Golden Lee, has now been rehomed. Um, as you can see, she's pretty fat, so uh, she'll probably be molting sometime in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, there's the, uh, Choco Taco. I will, uh, we'll move on to the next one here. So the next one is definitely a terrestrial. Uh, this one's a Gramostola Polka, uh, or Brazilian Black. Uh, this one is Midnight. Midnight is, um, just a very sweet girl. Um, she doesn't mind being held. Probably one of the nicer tarantulas in my room, so. But she is a little bit bigger than the uh, Chaco, so she's getting us something that's a little bit bigger size. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get some dirt in there. Now, just like in the other one, I want to get a good layer of dirt here, just so that she could, she could easily make a hide for herself. Uh, but yeah, I'll spread all that out. And then we'll get some cork bark here. I think this one will be a pretty nice little home for, for her. It's kind of got a nice little curve there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of throw this around the edges. We're going to dig this out a little bit for her, kind of get a starter bear, uh, little burrow going there. And then she can, she can make it look pretty however she wants, because she won't like it the way I do it. So, we'll throw a few of these back here. Now with this one, um, I do have a particular figurine that I'm going to use on this one, just because... I love this little girl. Uh, it's a, she's just so much nicer than all my other tarantulas. Um, but Chaco is definitely a really chill tarantula as well. As you saw, I didn't have to really do anything. Um, but the Chaco is still a little bit timid when it comes to handling. Uh, I don't recommend you handle your tarantulas hardly ever. But whenever they crawl on you, it's kind of hard not to handle them. Because they're just asking for it, you know. Uh, so, let's get, we'll go ahead and get a water dish this time. And then we'll figure out where to put the figure. Alrighty. Now, we'll come to the figure here. might be too big so what I'm gonna do I want this guy in here Batman he probably will fit if I really push him down in here there he goes and I'm also gonna put a dragon We're gonna, dragons are cool so let's put a dragon back there on the side of the burrow there okay. 
put all this away. All right. So next, I'm gonna take some water and we'll fill up the dishes. Alrighty, just because the tractor is not in there, I, I did mention this in the last video I did about how soft the uh, the mist is with it, and I just kind of want to give you a little demonstration, just uh, just how soft it is, and kind of what I was talking about. So let's go ahead and get Midnight into her new cage here. She is also getting pretty close to molting as well, so she's she's a pretty thick girl as well. Come on, come on, man. Let's see if you can see that. Oh. But she has a very small burrow right now. It's the one that I made for her whenever she first got in here. Oh, come on. This is not your home anymore. It's not your home anymore. All right, let's get this quarter bark out of the way. She does not want to go up, which makes sense because she is a terrestrial. What are you flipping on your back for? <laughs> she's she's being difficult. Let's see if I can use a different paintbrush. All right, Midnight is now in there. We'll go ahead and get her out. There you go. See, that's not too bad. But yeah, you can see how, how thick her abdomen is. Um, this is a slower growing species, so I don't expect her to molt like super soon, but uh, maybe within the next month or uh, or two, you know. But um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's my Grandma Stella Polkra, my Brazilian Black. Uh, midnight and um, yeah so that's the rehoming video that I have for y'all but if you like this one go ahead and like and subscribe uh, definitely helps me out I am just doing this for fun but uh, the more supporters I get that's that's just awesome I'm just trying to help out in the hobby in the community of tarantulas uh, this is my these are my favorite creatures on the planet so uh I do have a great passion for them. But yeah, if you watch this video, thank you for uh, for taking the time out of your day to watch it. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.